Hey, and welcome to uh, Katina's reading of El Orlando Ray's uh, Making Money Work for Us, How MMT Can Save America. You can get this book on uh, progressive.org in the bookstore, not on that website. Anyway, so I'm on, I'm just beginning of chapter two, where does money come from? <clears throat> Starts off like this. Now that we understand what money is, in this chapter, we examine where money comes from. We start with a simplified explanation of how money gets into the economy. In the first section, uh, we will look at the state's money, including the role played by the Treasury and the Central Bank, and then turn to private creation of money by private banks, supported by Central Bank. We finish with a somewhat more detailed explanation of how the Treasury, the Central Bank, and private banks cooperate to ensure to assure uh, to issue rather government money as well as uh, government bonds. A money creation simplified the state's money. As discussed in the introduction in Chapter 1, we should not think of money as invention of the private sector. Money is and always has been a, a state money, <clears throat> a creation of the authorities who choose a, a money of account and impose obligations to drive the currency. Privately issued debts are denominated in a state of money of account, as my professor, Jaime Minsky, used to say. Everyone can create money. This is, that is, excuse me, issue a liability denominated in the, mon in the money of account. But the problem is to get it accepted. We'll come back to that. But let's begin at the beginning, the state's own money, as we already did learn, when you hold the government's currency, you are a creditor and the government is the debtor. You can use the government's currency to pay down your own debts, including your tax obligations. When, we, when you use currency to pay taxes, both you and the government are simultaneously redeemed. You no longer owe taxes, and the government is no longer your debtor. As discussed in the old days, governments simply imposed obligations such as taxes and spent its own liabilities that would be accepted as in payment. It could stamp coins, cut tally sticks, or print paper notes to spend as currency. These would be denominated currency in government's own money of account. Governments uh, would then accept this currency back, uh, back in payment. What, what did the government do with the tax revenue? Burned it or shredded it as, or melted it or recoining? Until a few countries ago, centuries, excuse me, centuries ago, the obligation imposed on the government's subjects, mon uh, monarchies or citizens and uh, democracies, usually took the form of tithes, tribute, fines, and fees, and fees, and fees, not in fees, excuse me. However, taxes gradually became more important from the 18th century, as these obligations had to be paid in the currency they drove a demand for it. Spending by government must come for, uh, before taxes can be paid and currency until the government spends some currency. No one can pay taxes using that currency. We also noted that the government can, cannot run out of its own currency. It can always print notch or stamp uh, more paper notes, uh, tally sticks, or metal coins. Today is a bit more complicated. We'll need a we'll need to dig into the details a bit to see how modern governments could spend using their central banks. Indeed, there are two degrees of separation between the government and its citizens so far as spending and taxes are concerned. 
this somewhat veils the processes and makes it easy to reach the wrong conclusion. More people, include most economists, are these and confused about all this. We need, a, we need to lift the veil of fog. Uh, B, how the central bank creates money. Modern government spending involves two entities, the central bank and the treasury, and their activities are necessarily coordinated. The central bank is responsible for monetary policy, as everyone knows, but it is also the government's bank, which most people forget. The treasury is the entity charged with spending and taxing for the government, but it all but actually makes all payments and receives all tax payments through the central bank. While many economists draw a sharp dividing line between monetary and fiscal policy, it is impossible to maintain such a divi division in the real world because there are monetary impacts of foreign, uh, foreign excuse me, fiscal policy. Many money is always involved in uh, fiscal policy action, that is, spending and taxing. Still, it is useful to think of a division of responsibilities when it comes to the creation of government money. Uh, to put it simply, the central bank lends government money into existence while the treasury spends it into existence. Remember, and, and remember this way, the central bank lends, the treasury spends. That should not be too surprising. After all, the central bank is a bank. Bank lending creates money, as well as, as we will explain in more, in more detail later. This is true also for the central bank. The main difference is this private banking banks today create deposits as their money. The central bank creates a bank reserves plus central bank notes as its money. When the central bank lends, it directly creates reserves that is the form to its intent uh, its lending takes. The, cent the central bank lends reserves to private banks by crediting their reserve accounts at the at the central bank. This is simply a keystroke credit to the borrowing bank's balance sheet. The private the private bank's reserve account is much like your deposit account at, at your bank, sort of checking account. Private banks make payments to each other using this checking account, just as you write checks on your account account uh, bank accounts to be to make payments. Reserves are liabilities of the central bank and assets of the bank that goes that, that got the credit. The central bank holds the private bank's IOUs in which the private bank may, pays interest to the bank as a central bank. Central banks do not normally lend directly to other banks of foreign uh, firms or to households, although if it allowed them to have a check account at the central bank, this would be easy, easy enough to do by simply crediting the check account. Finally, uh, central banks also create reserve when they buy assets. Typically, central banks buy government bonds and sometimes also private bonds, such as mortgage-backed securities from private banks. When they do so, they credit the reserve account of the selling bank. This is called an open market purchase. Central banks can also sell bonds to a private bank, debiting the bank's reserve, reserves called an open uh, market sale. So central bank purchases are used to increase reserves held by banks and also, oh sorry, and sales are used to reduce reserves. Keep that in mind. This is the large portion, of, no, wait, this is a large part, part, part of what is normally called monetary policy. <clears throat> Excuse me. Note, this is a minor exception to our rule that central banks lend and treasury spend. Central banks do buy a limited range of financial assets, but these purchases are under, undertaken to implement monetary policy not to move resources to the government as sector, which is what fiscal policy is largely about. 
Reserves can always be converted on demand to central bank notes, our green paper dollar in U.S. That conversion uh, conversion is done by the central bank to meet the demand of the public for cash. Every time you go to an ATM machine to withdraw cash, your bank must convert its reserve deposits at the central bank to cash. Private banks cannot print up cash, but rather must order it from the central bank that they pay, they pay for the cash through a debit to their uh, reserves. Modern central banks never refuse to provide the cash the public demands, even if banks are short reserves to make the conversion to central bank will lend reserves to them so that they can convert them into the cash the public demands. C, how modern treasury spent through their central banks. In chapter one, we discuss several sovereign uh, money operation that, oh, sorry, creation, there we go, that, one, uh, that more or less accurately captures the essence of sovereign spending in the era before central banks were created. That it, that is to say, the way things worked for first four thousand four thousand to six thousand years since money originated, the treasury simply spent its own currency to make payments and collected the, its own currency as tax receipts. We rarely do it that way anymore. The the modern treasury uh, uses its bank, the central bank, to make and receive pay payments on his behalf. This isn't so strange. Firms and households make and receive payments through their private banks. So let us know, uh, let us now move on to a more realistic explanation of the way things work to get today. Here we will separate the Treasury and Central Bank. The Treasury is, ta uh, is tasked with implementing the budget approved by elected representatives and with the collecting the tax imposed by Congress or parliament, or parliament. But it is the Central Bank that makes and receives payments for the Treasury. The Treasury holds a deposit account at the Central Bank that is debited when payments are made by central bank and credited when payments are received by the central bank. We will begin our discussion by including a private bank with an account at the central bank. We also included, or we also include two other private entities, a taxpayer who owes taxes and a contractor who performs services for the government. For simplicity, we assume uh, we assume they both are used the same bank, although nothing of significance changes if one of them were to use another bank. See section F below uh, below for payment between banks when the treasury spends and issues a check to the to the contractor for services. The contractor presents that to the bank, which credits the contractor's deposit account. The bank sends a check to the central bank, which credits its reserves. The central bank will post a debit to the treasury's account to balance the credit to reserves. Note that there are two financial impacts on the Private sector, the contracts deposit, contractors deposit account rise by the amount of the tre treasuries of spending and the bank's reserves also rise by the same amount. There is one real impact. The contractor sold a resource, say a new vent window for a government building to the government equal in, equal in value to the deposit received. In other words, the, the reserve result of these financial transactions was to, was to move a real resource to the public sector. From point of view of the government, that is the propose of this uh, purpose, excuse me, of this part of the monetary system, the obtain, uh, to obtain real resources for government use from the, po the point of you are the contractor. The financial transactions 
uh, monetize the service provided, enabling the contractor to sell a product to in exchange for a demand deposit credit. In terms of balance, the sheets uh, balance sheet impacts the contractor's asset. The windows so, window sold is debited, and the contractor's demand deposit asset is credited. The bank's liability go up by the amount of the demand deposit owed to the contractor, but the bank's assets go up by the amount of its reserve credit at the central bank. Finally. We need, the, we need to understand the internal accounting between the Treasury and the central bank. When the Treasury spends, the central bank credits of private banks the reserves and debits the Treasury's deposit at the central bank. When taxes are paid, the central bank de debits a private bank's reserves and credits the Treasury's deposit account at the central bank. These internal accounting procedures are invisible to the U.S non-government sector, which sees only the impacts on private bank deposits and reserves, as well as the sale of output to the government. The internal accounting has no impact on the rest of the economy. It is sort of like the internal accounting of a household. A spouse could promise to pay the other spouse $10 for wash, washing the dishes, or the parents could promise a weekly allowance to the kids. All this can be kept uh, can be kept track of in an account book with net settlements at the end of the year. No one outside the family would know or care what was going on inside the household's internal accounts. All that would matter is the internal and external accounting. Did the household make the car and markets payments, receive wages for outside work, and pay taxes to the government? Who owed with whom within the household would uh, be at, of no concern, at least until the spouse goes to divorce court. The Treasury, the U.S. Treasury and the Fed do keep internal accounts and they make sure the accounts balance. They, they've adopted procedures to, uh, to ensure that the Treasury always had a positive uh, balance in its account that can be de debited whenever the Fed makes payments on behalf of the Treasury. These involve private banks and bond markets too. The procedures, the procedures are complicated but pr foolproof. How do we know? Because Treasury checks are never bounced by the Fed to uh, due to insufficient funds. Even though there are hundreds of millions of dollars paid and received daily, and even if the Treasury spends trillions more dollars than it receives in taxes over the course of a year, no Treasury check gets bounced. That's pretty good evidence that the Fed and Treasury know what they're doing. But in any case, those uh, internal accounts are of no consequence to anyone outside the government sector, Treasury, and Central Bank. All that matters is that Treasury spending lends to receive or to reserves, credits to private banks, and tax payments lend to lead to reserve debits. We'll dig in. We'll dig a little deeper in the next section, which is D. Our uh, how are taxes paid? Well. Uh, Thank you for um, for listening to that. Um, hoping that you decide to go to realprogressive.org and pick up the book yourself in regards to that. And just so I can do this on here. Again, this is what the book looks like. You can go here, I believe, to get the book. Um. Otherwise, please follow me on uh, TikTok um, at Calvin Taylor 666. I'm trying to get a thousand followers so I can do lives. Anyway, um, thanks for watching. I hope you decided to spread the scribe here as well. Uh, I will be doing nothing but reading MMT related books on this channel. Um, that's what I think uh, is uh, the better better chance of, of uh, getting it out. Um.
anyway so the majority of this will be on the youtube channel and the rest will be preview on my tiktok peace out for now